So apparently Meghan Markle is still seething over the South Park parody of the privacy tour, the worldwide privacy tour. And apparently she is calling it baseless and boring. I will say that South Park is not boring. Not quite sure it's even baseless, but that is the word on the street that she is still freaking out. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're going to talk about her and her dad a little bit and Samantha Markle, her half sister. And recently, her blog post from the TIG was revealed. So the question is, has Meghan Markle been lying about her dad? Ha has she been not telling the truth? Or has she been telling the truth, but it's just a little hypocritical? So here we're here. My name's Deanna, and I am here with Hot for History. And we're going to talk about Meghan Markle, her blog, her relationship with her dad, her half-sister, the fact that she's probably still freaking out about... South Park parody, which apparently they're not suing, but there's the deal. So tonight we're going to talk about this. We're going to start um, with kind of going with backtracking a little bit. I am about to show the blog post, Laurel. Um, the blog post, by the way, the articles, if it's, it's in the TIG. She had a blog years ago called the TIG, and there are these archives. I will say about Megan, I personally think she's an excellent writer. I've read some of the stuff that she's written She and she has like a children's book out and she does a really great job writing. And that is honestly the truth. Um, but first, we're going to look at this because I want you to give you guys some context. Um, OK, so there's this big family squabble. Samantha Markle is her half sister. So Megan was raised with her dad, Thomas Markle, and her mother, Doria. And so at some point, they ended up getting a divorce, but Thomas Markle was very involved and in many cases was basically raising her for a long time. And now there's this lawsuit with Samantha Markle, her half-sister, because she is, she is calling Megan out and saying she said that she was an only child and honestly, and the things she said about my dad, I'm suing. She's not suing for a lot of money in, you know, I mean, relatively so. I mean, some people may think it's a lot of money, but considering that they're multi, multi millionaires, it's really not a lot. But she just wants to call her out and they're trying to get this case gone. One of the things that I think is, you know, really hysterically funny, but, you know, this is what they're doing. They're sort of parsing words. And so. One of the, the things that Samantha Markle is bringing up is that Megan said she was an only child. OK, so what her attorney is saying is that Megan did not claim to be an only child. Um, he says and now this was brought up on the Oprah interview uh, that, that and and Samantha saying that there's this whole false rags to riches story. But Megan's and Megan's being sued by Samantha for defamation and injurious falsehood over the bombshell interview that she had with Oprah in 2021, as well as in the Finding Freedom biography. So this is the thing. Now you guys tell me what you think about this. Megan's attorney, Michael Kump, reportedly told a court hearing in his open remarks that they were dealing with her impressions of her own childhood growing up. So she had the impression that she was an only child, which he claimed were not a subject for a legal case. Samantha Markle is seeking $75,000 in damages in a Florida court over allegations, which she claims subjected her to humiliation, shame, and hatred on a worldwide scale. I will say that Samantha did get a lot of uh, attacks through that or whatever, but um, now it's kind of going back and forth. So her lawyer, uh, Peter Tickton, told the court that Finding Freedom was used by the Duchess to affirm this false narrative that she supposedly lived a rags to riches um, lifestyle. So Megan's legal team is trying to get the case thrown out in a court session conducted via Zoom on Wednesday. A motion to dismiss the case was heard by Florida judge um, Mr. Kump, who has rep represented A-list celebrities, including the Kardashians and, and the Jenner sisters, said that 10 statements 
that were alleged to be de defamatory by Samantha Markle in Finding Freedom should be dismissed um, as she didn't write it. She didn't write it. So that's my big question. Like if you have a ghostwriter, does that mean that, you know, you you get a free pass? I don't know. Um, so he also alleged that Megan's comments that were made in the Oprah interview were not defamatory given the context. He reportedly argued that when she spoke about, and again, here we go. She had the impression that she was an only child and that's how she felt but that's not necessarily what she said. And so she can't be sued for it because even though she said, you know, I was raised an only child or whatever, why should she be sued for that? Because that was her impression. Okay. So now back to the South Park thing. So apparently Samantha now went on you know, I guess her own little media tour or whatever to respond. I mean, people are wanting to interview her reading this meaning uh, regarding the South Park thing. So she definitely mocked uh, Megan and she basically said, hey, Megan um, basically was represented perfectly in South Park. It's per perfect representation of her perfect parody. And so Samantha um, criticized Megan uh, for their dislike of the latest episode of South Park. Like, you know, basically, why aren't they laughing? She says it's a cartoon. And she says they just don't like that anything resembles them. And then she told Dan Wooten that the couple can't claim copy copyright on their likenesses. So Markle um, used irony to refer to her half sister and her husband. She goes, forgive me. This is what Samantha said. I never got the memo that God died and they became God. And suddenly they have a copyright on all things comedy. So Megan, I mean, Samantha's just saying, hey, lighten up. Lighten up. It's funny. Like, why don't you think this is funny? So uh, Samantha's, again, they went into the, the lawsuit. And then she also said, um, here's just another graphic. Yeah. So she said that they got it right. She says, oh, they definitely got it right. I don't know what you guys think at all. I'm not for some reason seeing my comments. So I don't know. Sorry. Sometimes guys some of the comments, I guess, are blocked. And I don't know why. So anyhow, um, I'm going to refresh them. Okay. So also, because we want to get to the blog post, we want to get to the blog post and I want to talk about it. But first, <laughs> did you guys see at the BAFTA Awards that Kate and Will came dressed a little quirky, a little different from their typical look, right? And I don't know how you feel about the black gloves and the quirky earrings. Megan admitted lying to the British courts over her participation in Finding Freedom. Okay, Judith. Great, I'm getting the comments again. Okay, I'm going to address these in a second. All right, so uh, the, the big news, the big news is that oh, Kate Goost will. Oh, my gosh. How delicious for all of us royal watchers who know that they're not supposed to be displaying any public affection. There's no PDA. Hate the black gloves. I didn't like it either. My daughter was like, I love the black gloves. I was like, eh, no. And I wasn't crazy, although I like the earrings if you close up to it separately. I was, I didn't, I didn't think she had a hit on the earrings either, but look, I, they're trying to be a little more hip because he also, I look like a velour jacket or something. Um, I think she may have written parts of Harry's book. Yeah. There are parts that are written in a completely different style. True. Okay. So see what I'm saying? Felicity likes the gloves. My daughter, Samantha loves the gloves and, um, I didn't like the gloves as much. But I feel like she can't love the earrings too. Okay. So, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, we, I do like that they did something a little bit different. Like they're not all, you know, feeling like they have to always be so formal and not kind of off the cuff. So what happened that we're, they were totally dressed and um, Kate was wearing a, a white gown. Her white gown was from Alexander McQueen. She always loves him. And then she had the shoulder shoulder length black satin opera gloves and statement earrings by Zara. I can buy them. Okay, it's by Zara. Okay, guys, let's go off to Zara. 
I love when she buys like things just off the. Okay, so now Susie also loves the gloves. I think it's just Debbie and I or Deborah that weren't as crazy about the gloves. I mean, it definitely made the dress look better. I mean, in, in a sense, I don't know. I don't think the white gloves would have worked, but what else could she? I love gloves. I love gloves in general. I do. Okay. So he wore a black suit with a velvet jacket and bow tie, and he looked very dapper and she was looking amazing. And then remember how Megan always and Harry uh, were like, oh, they're so formal. Like we couldn't even hug or we, you know, all of that. Well, this is like, it was not a big deal. I couldn't really show the video, but she just kind of boop, like gave him a little tap on the bum and everybody's just freaking out, deliriously happy about it. Um, she basically just was like, come on. Like, you know, like it was natural. She did a little pat on the butt and a little flirtatious gesture. And then of course, now that's all the news. They never get physical in public. They, you hardly ever see them even holding hands. Um, they mostly walk a modest distance from one, one another, but this is their first time attending the BAFTAs in a few years and they were clearly enjoying themselves. I mean, it was kind of more like a night out rather than an official thing, right? So he looks so good. Okay. Di disappointed to see them this way. I have always liked that they have been so respectable and, and that they had fun, but a little too much, really too much on the, on the gloves alley, um, or the pad on the butt. Like, I don't know. Okay. So Queen Elizabeth's death in September, King Charles gave a speech in the drawing room, making William and daughter-in-law, the new Wales is, as well as bestowing the title of Duke of Cornwall. And, you know, by the way, being the D Duke and Duchess of Cornwall immediately gives them like hundreds of millions of dollars, um, because it's all like property. Today, I'm proud to create him. Yeah, okay, we already read that. Okay, so basically, this is me taking a little left turn, but I really wanted to talk about this, and I tried to insert it here. Okay, so beautiful. I love her. I do love her, too. Okay, I think it, uh, okay, so white gloves, black gloves. Mm, okay, so we're kind of debating over what color gloves. Okay, she is beautiful. I do think she's gorgeous. She's my favorite. I'll be honest. I love her. Um, okay. I already showed you that. I have to go forward instead of backwards. Um, sorry, guys. Okay. Now, let's talk about this. Um, wait, I'm not going to go there yet. I've got some other stuff. Where are some of my other slides? Fun. Okay, I don't know. I'm missing, I'm missing something. Um, I am going to talk about... Yeah, I'm definitely missing something. So just pay attention to this. Okay, so what we know now, because this is the part that I want to get to, and I feel very passionate about her relationship with her dad. I don't know, guys. You tell me how you feel, but there is something about this in everything that they've done that just oh gets to me the most. Okay, so she has a blog called the TIFF, TIG. And I never really read it, whatever, you know, all of my girlfriends have blogs. Some of them have really great blogs. Um, but this, this article, this blog in, con in you know, com considering that she said so many things about her dad and she is not reconciled with him, this, I don't think it's a lot if she's been lying, but She's been making it sound like she, like she wasn't as close as she was. And so this blog post that was discovered, I think, by some podcaster, it says um, here, I'm going to read it to you. So this was on the TIG and several royal experts have shared an even more compelling post that they describe as heartbreaking. And uh, they, she just needs to, in my opinion, reconcile with her dad. OK, so the piece focuses on her dad. So this is what she said. Um, let me read it to you. After uh, uh, So they, they were really close at some point. And um, let me read this. Okay, so she says, our club sandwiches and fruit smoothie tradition. After my tap and ballet classes, which, by the way, he religiously took me to on Saturday mornings after working 75 hours a week as a lighting director. 
the fishing trips along the Kern River um, to catch catfish and trout. This was a Father's Day post, by the way. And to cook it up for dinner. And the commitment he made uh, to my lighting high school musical so that they felt as grand as a Broadway show. The blood, sweat, and tears this man who came from so little in a small town of Pennsylvania where Christmas stockings were filled with oranges and dinners were potatoes and spam, invested in my future so that I could grow up to have so much. He helped me turn my bathroom into a dark room when I was 12 because I wanted to be a photographer. Shading my windows and red lighting gels and filling my cabinets with extra jugs of fixer. He put gas in my car when I went for audition, trying to make it as an actress. He is the person who believed in the grand dream of mine. Sorry, hold on. I got to take a drink. In this grand dream, he, he is the man who, who believed in this grand dream of mine before I even knew it was a possibility. He taught me to write thank you notes to always arrive early, to drink Arnold Palmer's, to find my light when I'm on camera and beyond. And that right there is the point. My dad taught me to find my light and he taught me to always make my own box. To my dad, my thoughtful, inspiring, this was in 2014, hardworking daddy, happy Father's Day. If I had all the water in the world, I'd give you all the water in the world. And, and she says, you guys won't know what that means, but it's some, it means something to my dad and I. And then and then she goes on to say that this is the same man who took apart two Barbie doll sets and put them back together so that there could be, you know, a, a white dad, a black mother, a, you know, like and mix the kids up. And so it's very heartwarming. And then yet in 2022, so fast forward like eight years, she makes no mention of him co-parenting her at all. So it was like when her relationship got deeper with the Royal family. He was persona non grata. And so that is so, so sad to me. Let me get your, let me get your um, comments because I have something to say and then I'm just going to, I'm just going to end it there. Okay. So hold on. Um, we're not talking about the go. It does. It goes way back to 2014. And so what happened was he, went out when they were engaged and what he did was he um you know got paid he took money for being interviewed or whatever right around the engagement and that really made megan upset like it really made her upset and so she says it's really hard to reconcile because of that so this is what she says hang on she says, I can't really, re it's hard to um, reconcile because of what he did. Um, and, and I have a lot to say about that. She says, I look at Archie and I genuinely can't imagine doing anything to intentionally cause pain to my child. And then she talks about her dad who basically, you know, ended up taking some money or something, you know, posing for photos for paparazzi and that was an unforgivable thing and she has a really hard time reconciling it with him so what i have to say about that is she's upset with him because he basically made money talking about his family do you see the irony so now she's upset because of that but she won't forgive him he lives in mexico and he all he wants all he wants is to be back with megan so the sad part is that there's this deep irony that because she won't forgive the man that meant so much to her that basically made a mistake because he spoke about her without them knowing it. He made some money, probably let's say tops. It was $50,000. They've made hundreds of millions of dollars talking about their family without permission. So it's very, very sad. And I agree. I don't know how you do that to your dad. And I don't know why. I mean, if she, I think one of the best things she can do and what they can do for their press is to basically reach out to their family. And if they reach out to their family, I think that everything would be awesome. Guys, I have to get off real quick because, uh, you know, I kind of went through this, but now I've got something going on at the door. So, um, 
but it's very, very sad. And I definitely wanted to talk about this. Please subscribe to my channel and, you know, share it with your friends. And I, I'm going to go back and read some of these comments because I feel really, really bad that she, that this happened with her dad. And I think that they should reconcile, but you know, everybody has their own interpersonal stuff. So anyhow, I'm Deanna from Hot for History. We'll talk again later. Bye.